I'm interested in nanotechnology. Uh, nano science, nanotechnology is the next big thing. It's actually extremely small, 10 to the negative ninth meters, or one billionth of a meter is a, is a nanometer. And these materials are very interested uh, in industry applications, medical applications. They're used for the next generation of computers. Uh, IBM is researching these. What we're doing here at UAS with our undergraduate students are a couple different projects. Uh, in one project, I'm making nano-sized pores in the lithium-ion battery materials. And so this would allow lithium ions, the lithium ion batteries are in your cell phones and your laptops. This would allow lithium ion batteries to move in and out easier through these through these nano sized pores so you get faster recharge time and therefore you could build bigger batteries which they're starting to do for the new plug-in electric hybrid vehicles. The new thing about nano is it's between the molecular level which chemists have been working with for over 100 years, a couple hundred years, and the um, the larger like cellular micron level which biologists work with and and uh, so the nano is right in between so it can bridge uh, and and give new possibilities for what we can do on the one hand we could do medically uh, some amazing things because within the cells the micron scale of the cells within that all those structures are nano scale you basically have a protein as a nano machine and so being able to see at the nanoscale and manipulate at the nanoscale, you could actually directly influence uh, protein structures uh, for, for curing disease. Another project uh, we're, we're working on with nanotechnology, we got a National Science Foundation grant to get an atomic force microscope. The atomic force or scanning probe microscope uh, is able to see at a small scale uh, indirectly. You don't actually see it with light or photons like a regular optical microscope. It's able to then uh, scan with this probe uh, and get a map or topography of the surface. So you can, you can image the surface, see what, what the surface looks like. All our chemistry majors work with the instrument and actually even non-science majors. I teach a course in introduction to nanotechnology so they get a little taste of uh, this this, uh, this technique, this instrument, which is a major tool, uh, which when it was invented, a uh, Nobel Prize winning invention that really opened the door to nanotechnology because now people could see and work at the nanoscale. I collaborate with uh, Dr. Michael Lemke here at UIS and other, other biology faculty at the Emiquan restoration site. And uh, so I've been doing water quality chemistry there. Recently I realized we could do nanotechnology there as well, looking at how uh, nanoparticles, uh, iron nanoparticles my students are making, can help the bacteria reduce the nitrate, which is a, a, a pollution problem. So there's environmental applications as well. On the one hand, nanotechnology opens up a new, new opportunities with new, new properties. We could make, make new things, we can heal diseases, but it also introduces a new domain, a new area of unknown that could have negative effects either in the environment or in our health and so the toxicology of nanoparticles is a, is a very important uh, study and, and we've gotten involved somewhat with uh, using our, our microscope to see the nanoparticles and the um, human cells that they, they're culturing at the medical school and see how the, the interaction is there. Nanotechnology, lots of people are, are interested in it now. The federal government has a national nanotechnology initiative and is spending uh, across uh, different agencies millions, billions of dollars to do nanotechnology research. So it is, uh, a lot of people are interested in it. Not everyone at the undergraduate level is able to, to participate in that. And so that's something unique we can do here at UIS, um, which is why we were able to get uh, funding to, to develop this nanotechnology education program.